morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. Glad that you're here. <laughs> a few announcements for us today is that on Monday, it's uh, Labor Day, um, as it's Labor Day weekend, the church office will be closed. On Sunday, September 8th, there, thank you for such a, a wonderful opportunity to bid farewell with a dinner. Thank you so much for, for all of that and your, your support and, and your care with that. There is a sign up for food for that meal um, out in the foyer if you'd like to participate in that. Um, otherwise, it would be great to, to be able to see you all. Thank you again for, for that thoughtful um, meal together. On Wednesday, September 11th, there will be a council meeting at 6.30 p.m. And quilting is Monday, September 9th at 9 o'clock a.m. Are there any other announcements? Yeah. Morning. Um, I just want to give everybody a little bit of an update. Now that we unfortunately know when Pastor Lady will be leaving us. Um, the call process, we are in working, getting that call process finished up, and uh, we'll be getting that submitted to the Synod, so we can begin that final process of getting a full-time pastor called as soon as we can. Um, been in discussion with the Synod about getting another interim. Um, what I'm told right now, there are no current interims available in our entire uh, section or our Synod. Um, there's a lot of churches right now, most of the Synod, that they're trying to balance getting interims for. So we're on the list, and as soon as we find a name, uh, Penny and I will get in contact with them and we'll get something. And hopefully we find someone who's great at the list of um, So just want to let everybody know what's going on there. Uh, we will be working on getting supply ministers lined up for as many Sundays as we can. Uh, anybody who's interested in helping lead a service, um, anybody has Besides, they want to step out on the limb and write a sermon and wants to step up and do something. We've had some folks within our uh, here step up and do that. So if anybody wants to do that again or if anybody wants to try it for the first time, feel free to let Linda or myself know. Um, we can get you on that schedule. So, but if anybody has any questions about um, the next few months as we work together and move forward, let me uh, or another, another council member know. We'll be sure we can try to answer anything we have for you, okay? Any other announcements this morning? With those said, let us pause for a moment of silence as we prepare to worship our Lord. Now as God has greeted us, let us greet one another.
Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. The Shenandoah Community Food Pantry is a vital resource for the community, providing food and necessities to, to those who need through for, and for referrals. With dedicated board members, volunteers, and donations, the pantry is able to serve the community throughout the year. Let's go back in time a few years when the idea of the community food pantry was just a thought in the minds of a circle of friends. At that time, a few churches had a place in their building where some canned food was on a shelf for anyone who needed it. Not much, but it served a purpose. At that time, larger cities had food pantries in the central area, and the idea was, the, the idea was beginning to become well known in Iowa and other states. The group in Shenandoah felt the city needed a central food pantry, and thus the food pantry was developed. It began in a church basement, and as it grew, it became incorporated into a tax-exempt foundation, authorized to accept tax-deductible donations, grants, and bequests, which can be used to purchase food for qualifying families, whom they call clients, who need a little help to feed their families. For several years, trips to Omaha were taken where food was by the pound to be purchased. Going up and down church basement steps with bags of canned food and the like was a challenge. So once again, the question was raised, what can we do to improve this situation? A building, the old community college annex, at 1209 Fifth Avenue was purchased and given to the Food Pantry Foundation. One floor, no steps, large parking lot, and plenty of room for double the number of shelves was overhauled and ready for business in 2018. It has so much room that now it has an area for household goods, bedding, and just about anything to fulfill the needs of the clients. For many years, Rosalie Kennison assembled and delivered the birthday bags to the food pantry. Thanks to Susan Maxine, this tradition of the Emanuel Lutheran Church continues. Cake mix, frostings, candles, a uh, pillowcase made by two of the Emanuel quilters, and a little gift given to a girl or boy are all placed in a birthday bag which seats on the food pantry shelves, just waiting to be take, taken home and made into a birthday cake. This morning's noisy offering is designated, designated to the community food pantry to use to purchase food and items that might be lacking on the shelves to keep them stocked. If you have a few minutes, go online to their Facebook page and take a tour of the building from 2018. Even better, call 246-2093 and find out when they are open and see the many improvements that have been made to make the experience for the clients even better. For our part today, we are collecting coins, dollars, and checks to help when purchases need to be made. All donations, no matter what the size, truly do make a difference when it comes to helping those in need. Thank you for your donations. The collection can that you see here will be in the foyer for the entire month of September. And remember the non-perishable food box, the bright yellow and green one, is always in the narthex for your contribution of food especially now as we head into fall and the holidays. So I have Dave Monaghan help us and we will collect the noise out.
thank you so much for caring to help keep this project for the community of New Hampshire going. This is the day the Lord has made. Please stand as you're able. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open and all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
feast of victory for our God. Provide first century Christians with instructions. 
instruction in godly behavior. Here, Christians are encouraged to listen carefully and to act on what they hear, especially by caring for those least able to care for themselves. Reading from James 1, beginning with verse 17. Whatever is good and perfect is a gift coming down to us from God our Father, who created all the lights in the heavens. He never changes or casts a shifting shadow. He chose to give birth to us by giving us his true word, and we, out of all creation, became his prized possession. Understand this, my dear brothers and sisters. You must all be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. Human anger does not produce the righteousness God desires, so get rid of all the filth and evil in your lives. And humbly accept the word God has planted in your hearts, for it has power to save your souls. But just don't listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you are only fooling yourselves. For if you listen to the word and don't obey, it is like glancing at your face in a mirror. You see yourself, walk away, and forget what you look like. But if you look carefully into the perfect law that sets you free, and if you do what it says and don't forget what you heard, and God will bless you for doing it. If you claim to be religious but don't control your tongue, you are fooling yourself and your religion is worthless. Pure and genuine religion in the sight of God the Father means caring for orphans and widows in their distress and refusing to let the world corrupt you. The word of God, the words of life. and 
in an imperfect but practical manner. God's gifts and our responses to them shape our daily lives. I absolutely love to spend my time outside, especially on days like today where it's a little bit cooler and less sunscreen is necessary. Soaking up in nature and getting some good vitamin D. There's something about being surrounded by the beauty of creation that just lifts my spirits. One day, I decided to go on a walk along a trail that I hadn't yet explored. The trail was covered in soft wood chips, with lush green plants and towering trees surrounding me. As I was walking, I stumbled upon something that took my breath away. No, it wasn't a wild animal or a hidden treasure. It was a spider web. And not just any spider web, but one of the largest that I have ever seen in my life. It wasn't on the trail itself, but high up in a tree. And I was relieved, because honestly, if it had been on the trail, I may have had a different response. But there it was, glistening in the sunlight. The web was like a decadent piece of art catching the light and shining in all of the colors that you would expect. Something as if I had never noticed before. And I stood there, mesmerized by the incredible craftsmanship of a little, tiny spider. And in that moment, I realized something profound. This spider web is a gift. A beautiful, unexpected gift from God. It struck me that James' words about every good gift, every perfect gift, comes from above. Right there, in that spider web, I could see it. Something so simple, yet so complex and beautiful. Just as God provides for us with the gifts that are perfect and beautiful. Even in the small and seemingly insignificant things, He showers you with His blessing, His love, and His grace in every aspect of your life. What are those gifts that you have in your journey? The things that are around you that remind you of the beautiful gifts that God gives you. In small, insignificant things, perhaps. In larger, more pertinent things. In every step of your journey. Even if it's something like a spider web. James starts out with a beautiful reminder. Every good and perfect gift comes from above. Picture this. God, who never changes, pours out gifts upon you that are always good and always perfect. It's a comforting thought, isn't it? Amidst all of life's ups and downs, we have a God who is constant and generous. One of the best gifts that he gives us is the word of truth. The messages of Jesus that bring us new life. Even though we fall short and make mistakes, God's grace and truth are given to us freely, unconditionally, abundantly. It's like receiving a gift that keeps on giving, helping us grow and transform into the people that God created us to be. And this brings us into looking into a mirror. Imagine if I had seen that stunning web and then promptly forgot about it. Or even, not even taken the time to appreciate it. James uses an analogy of a mirror. It helps us understand how we are able to interact with God's word. If we only glance at our reflection at the truth of who we are in light of God's word, 
and then walk away unchanged. <clears throat> it's like missing the beauty of a spider web and not letting it impact us, not letting it enhance our memory and our understanding of what a gift it is that we have before us. Instead, we are encouraged to reflect on our lives, to let God's word reveal our hearts and guide our actions. It's about seeing the beauty in the areas where we are able to grow. Just as the spider web was a reminder of God's artistry and provision, reflecting on God's word and helping us align our lives, this is God's grace and love. James used a vivid analogy about mirrors to make his point. Imagine looking in a mirror and seeing a big sponge on your face. If you didn't do anything about it, you just walk around with a large sponge on your face all day. This is what it's like when we hear God's word, but don't let it change us. We're like someone who glances at our reflection and then forgets what we just saw. Instead, we are encouraged to really look and see. Look and see the gifts that are around us. Look into the mirror and see the gifts that God has given you and the provisions that God has given you. For God gives you good and perfect gifts. And sometimes this can be challenging because we do see smudges in our reflection. And yet, in God's perfect law, this is a gift of freedom. It's not about just seeing our flaws, but understanding that freedom and life of God is offered to you, to me. And when we take our time and reflect honestly on our lives through this lens of God's word, we can see that God is with us, aligning us in actions according to his love. Because it's all surrounded by God's love. And it doesn't stop there with hearing the word. He calls us to act upon it. We are able to act as we are quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. These are practical ways to live out our faith in everyday situations. Being kind and thoughtful and patient with one another. God's gifts are perfect and given to you in love. We're invited to look deeply into this mirror of his word, allowing it to reveal who we are and whose we are. We are able to see who we are called to be as beloved children of God. We can commit to living out this faith with sincerity because God is with us, showing us kindness, compassion, and making us be a difference in others' lives, and others are making a difference in yours. Because of the Holy Spirit, we can embrace God's gifts and reflect on our lives, and we are able to act in ways that bring God's glory and peace to your heart. This is a good gift from God, peace to your heart. And by living out our faith, it means something as if we are acknowledging the truth that is set before us. It's about love and what God gives us. It's appreciating a spider web and then letting that appreciation inspire us to see and care for the beauty and the need around us. God's gifts are perfect. God's gifts he gives to you are perfect. It's everything that you've ever needed. And his words is a mirror that helps us to see clearly. And therefore we can embrace these gifts, reflect upon them deeply, and live out our faith 
in meaningful ways that bring God glory and bring peace to your heart. With the help of the Holy Spirit, we turn to our reflections and turn to the actions of the Holy Spirit and see that you are making a difference in this world. And God has made a difference in you. And that is the good news. Drawn together in the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray with confidence for the church, God's good creation, and all who are in need. God of 
every generation give the church a sense of purpose and belonging. Sustain and build up leaders and lay people as we accompany one another in our life of Christ. Merciful God. God of creation, you named humans as co-creators with you, where the earth cries out in pain bring wholeness. Guide governments and industry that environmental laws and practices seek to heal and not harm. Bring relief and justice to people and places suffering from climate catastrophe. Merciful God. Sovereign God, we pray for local communities of every kind, rural and urban, established and new. Lead those in authority to seek the good of all through their words and actions and to mentor others in honest and generous ways. Merciful God. Healing God, you draw near to all who are hurting. Be with all who desire relief from chronic and acute illness, cancer, and post-traumatic stress disorder. Strengthen health care workers, therapists, and caregivers. Tend to, tend to those who are close to our hearts, especially Kathy, Pat, and Howard, Don, Terry, Jane, Celia, Mary Jo, Wilson Bart, and those we now speak aloud for in our hearts. Merciful God. On this Labor Day weekend, we remember and give thanks for all who have fought for workers' rights around the world. Continue to improve working conditions and establish fair wages so that all people may thrive. Merciful God. Comforting God, console us when we mourn our departed. We hold fast to the promise that death has been defeated by our Savior, Jesus Christ. Merciful God. We entrust these and all our prayers to you, Holy God, in the name of your beloved child, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. You may be seated as you receive
through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.